Oh my god. It's been a while since I literally had to get up out of my chair and walk off the excitement I got from watching a show. I literally just started pacing back and forth my room, rattling off all different things that Oshinoko did so good. There's the complexity of the characters and the relationships. The seemingly traditional revenge plot makes the dark sides of showbiz, and the director's choices to emphasize certain scenes with bright, fluid, and straight up mesmerizing art and animation. I mean, Oshinoko just blessed our until now meaningless lives with a single greatest episode of anime, or possibly just anything ever made. I mean, rivaling something like episode 1015 of One Piece, that's practically the essence of a 20 year long series itself that closes off an entire era and starts a new one. The bold and loud statement is a testament itself how stupidly good this hour and a half truly was. But I mean, is it really fair to compare something that's a feature film length to a traditional anime episode and still call it the best to ever do it? Yes, yes it is. And that's because there's literally no other way to do it. If you chop this 90 minute prologue into three 30 minute episodes, it wouldn't have hit nearly as hard. I'm sure a lot of people wouldn't have even made it to the big plot revealing climax that kicks off the beginning to the actual story. But by making it a 90 minute story about I and her relationship growth through kids and complete character development arc where she learns to love, it allows the audience to be immersed in these emotions instead of pulling us back out and putting us back in between episodes, making an overall better viewing experience by not breaking the immersion of this seemingly fluid story but it doesn't take extra long time to become the greatest to ever do it because extra long time means it's extra hard to keep your audience's attention so you have to make your time meaningful so you fill your story with interesting characters dynamics growth and storytelling i mean the main trio itself is interesting enough to write an entire show about without any supporting characters we have serena who only dreamed of living a lavish life free of her ailments just like her idol eye before her life was tragically cut short then we have Goro living out his days as the doctor holding on to Serena's life because he couldn't save her just to meet her idol eye and wishes to do everything in his power to help her now to make up for his failures with Serena, but he gets murdered before he can accomplish this. And finally, we have I, who grew up with no parents in an orphanage, never having received love and doesn't know how to give it now consequently, to unknowingly giving birth to Goro's and Serena's reincarnations as Aqua and Ruby. And throughout this 90 minutes of bliss, you watch as they all start to develop familial bonds. But characters with no stories, like driving with no destination, how will you know when to turn or when you arrive? And for us anime only like myself, it probably felt like you were making U-turn after U-turn how this story was unfolding. At first, it seemed like it was gonna be about Goro helping I through her journey then maybe it was going to be about the three of them navigating the world of showbiz hiding their familial bonds but all these things were only happening to allow these characters to develop a closer bond to one another and just have us fall further in love with them just to rip it all away from us and reveal the true story with one of the most emotional gut-wrenching deaths i've seen in a while but honestly no matter how good the story or character writing was i have to give props to takahashi ray and the art and animators for making one of the most memorable scenes from premiere that was just full of noteworthy ones the use of lighting to emphasize the attention behind eyes words the authenticity and shakiness in ray's voice as she's giving her dying monologue and the lifelessness of eyes body and the terror sadness in the kid's face all these things put together made one of the most emotionally impactful scenes i've ever consumed and it'd be an understatement to say that i cried while watching this and while we're talking about the artist animators and director let's talk about how these three positions transcended this anime above so many others with just strategic use of their skills instead of making everything about this idol anime flashy they just made it average only emphasizing the people actions they wanted you to focus on and admire giving them that idle feeling through the screen i mean just look at aqua ruby and eyes lighter colored hair that stands out from the rest their saturated eyes and clothes not even to mention their star pupils that stand out amongst all of anime let alone this show and all these things just draw you to them unlike goro or the director then the actions of eyes performance or aqua's acting that are complemented with super flashy or dark and ominous animations that set these scenes apart from the rest of the anime literally the showing the audience in real time their ability at shifting the mood of the room with their presence and talent i could truly go on and on about so many little things that i enjoyed about this 90 minute peak of my anime journey like the joy the babies brought me with their glow sticks but there's simply just too many things to talk about when everyone in the studio gives one project they're all pouring their blood sweat and tears into it you're just bound to get something like oshinoko that's just impossible to break down its greatness into words and with that being said if you recommend the show to anybody, for the love of God, do not show them the synopsis. It just makes it sound weird and doesn't do it any justice. Just show them the show. Trust me, I found out the hard way. Because anything made with this much quality art 
animation, director choices, voice acting, story writing, characters, relationships, comedy, and drama is bound to transcend any words that you could ever say and surpass any genre preferences that someone might have. And that's why Oshinoko is just the best to ever do it and why Wednesdays are the best days of the week. But I'm sorry if I sounded weird. I do have COVID. But if you enjoyed my review and reaction to Oshinoko, make sure you like and subscribe. It really does help me out. Let me know what you thought about it down below in the comments and I'll see you guys in the next one.